Yo, what is going on everybody? Shri Kanasa here. So the Google search ads tutorial specifically for Skags. Now, if you're not really sure what Skags even mean, by the end of this video, not only are you gonna know what a Skag is, but also how to actually create one and run one successfully. Now, I personally believe that search ads are some of the most overlooked ads out there simply because they're a little bit more complicated than the normal Google shopping ads. And with search ads, it is definitely true that it requires a little bit of more work than shopping ads. But one thing I've personally noticed in my own experience with search ads is that they're much more consistent long term. Sure, they may take a lot of extra days and a lot of extra effort in the beginning to actually get to work. But once you kind of get the hang of it and actually know how to optimize search ads and know how to actually run them, then they can be long term profit generators. But that does not mean that you should completely just give up on shopping ads or Facebook ads and just jump onto search ads. In fact, I personally believe that 20% of your sales should be coming from search ads while 80% still comes from shopping ads or maybe if you want to do Facebook or something else. But in this video, I'm going to be going over a specific type of search ad campaign, which is known as a skag and also how to create one. So without wasting any more time, let's jump right into it. So the Google search ads tutorial. Now, the first thing you will have to do in order to even understand what I'm about to go over is destroy that like button down below. It will take just two quick seconds and I'll really appreciate it. Okay, hopefully you have done that. But let's start talking about exactly what a SCAG is. Now, this is kind of an acronym for something bigger, but this specific term in general really confuses a lot of people. And you want to think of a SCAG as simply a single keyword ad group. Now, what exactly is a single keyword ad group? For those people who use Facebook, let's go ahead and kind of compare this to Facebook. With Facebook ads, when you create one specific campaign and you have several ad sets within that campaign, each ad set will usually have a type of audience within that. Because with every ad set out there, you need to target an audience in order to get the Facebook ads to show to that given audience. So think of a skag as simply one ad set with only one audience, no multiple audiences, no stacked interests, etc. Only one single audience. And that's exactly what a skag is. Inside of one specific Google search campaign, you will have multiple different ad groups, but each ad group will only be targeting one specific keyword. As you guys can see here, I've kind of laid it out specifically one campaign and inside that one campaign multiple ad groups and inside those multiple ad groups one keyword per ad group and there are a lot of benefits to this as well as the downfalls to this which i'll be going over very soon but the main reason why a skag is so good is because it directly impacts a specific metric within google ads which really determines a lot of things for your campaign so number one metric that you want to kind of be keeping track of especially with search ads is the quality score and with the skag this quality score is really easy to maintain and simply because the specific things that you do with the SCAG campaign will directly benefit the quality score. But if we look at this specific chart right here, which I found online, you guys will see that on the Y axis, this is the cost per conversion, meaning how much you're spending money to get a sale. And the X axis over here is the quality score. With Google ads in general, as your quality score increases, your cost per conversion will usually come down. And that's exactly what we want if you want to be profitable long term. And the beauty about a SCAG campaign is that it actually helps achieve this goal. But enough about talking about the specifics of a SCAG. Let's try to understand the benefits of a SCAG and how it can actually benefit you to kind of include a SCAG with your other shopping ads or just with your other search ads in general. So the specific benefits, the number one benefit is that there's more control with the SCAG. Now this is kind of similar with Facebook ads. If you stack multiple different interests within an ad set, pretty soon you're not going to know exactly which interest is getting you sales, what audience within what interest is it the one buying your product so that's going to lead to a lot of confusion and you're going to be lacking control the same is true for Google search ads. Normally, if you have multiple keywords within each ad group, it's going to really lead to a lot of confusion for not only for the Google algorithm, but also for you. And our main goal with a SCAG is to kind of lower the confusion that Google's algorithm is having, because the more confused you make Google's algorithm, the tougher time it's going to have to get you those sales with the search campaign. Because again, a search campaign is dependent on a lot of factors, such as the search terms people are using, the type of ad that you have out there, and the overall buying intentions of the audience that is searching for that given product so a lot of things kind of influence this algorithm and you want to kind of lower its confusion which a skag helps do really really well but in addition to that you're going to lower the amount of ad spend that you are constantly wasting on unnecessary keywords because and it doesn't matter whether you're using search ads or shopping ads you already know that you're going to be ranking for a lot of useless keywords and sometimes these useless keywords have so much popularity that you end up wasting a lot of money on them so with the skag this is really minimized simply because because of the specific direct keywords 
which you are providing to the audience. So overall, it's going to be spending money on the specific keywords which actually generate you sales. And when Google sees that those specific keywords are actually generating you sales, it's going to try to rank you for those keywords more and more often while lowering your cost per conversion. So this is kind of like a double win-win situation for you. But in addition to that, the specific audience that the algorithm is showing your ads to is much more directed and straightforward, meaning it's the closest resemblance of the product that you're selling compared to just launching a normal search ad with a bunch of different keywords. And again, the more you lower Google's confusion, the better it's going to perform and the more results that it's going to get you. But the most important thing of all, which I already kind of mentioned, is that there's going to be a higher ad relevancy because you're only using one specific keyword. So what happens is when you're using only one specific keyword, it'll be much easier to incorporate that keyword within the title of your ad and also the description of your ad. So what happens then is that this directly impacts the relevancy because you're directly giving to the people what they're searching and your keywords are matching the people's searches. So this is really a good thing in Google's eyes. And what that's going to do is that it's going to increase your quality score over time, as you can see. And obviously, you already know by now that a higher quality score is going to lead to a lower cost per acquisition, which is exactly what you want. But of course, with all the good things out there, there's some bad things associated with it. And the same is true for Skag. So here are some of the fallbacks with Skags. Fallback number one is that there's lower room to scale simply because when people stop searching for the main keyword, which you're ranking for, your skag or your search campaign basically is just going to die off. So in that case, you will really have trouble scaling the product unless you can find more specific keywords, which you then can create skags for. In addition to that, after a while, you're going to notice that you have so many different ad groups to handle just because you have different keywords for that given product, and it could become really a pain for you. And if you're already kind of a messy person, this may become hard for you to kind of know exactly what is working and what is not working. So that's another fallback with skags. Another one is that specifically you need to have a little bit of data beforehand. Now, what do I mean that it's exactly? Well, if you have previous shopping ads data, it's much, much better. And I actually recommend that you have data with shopping ads before you create a Skag campaign, simply because then you know what keyword is already getting you sales. You can simply copy that and use that for your Skag campaign. But just using the keyword is not enough. Sometimes you'll notice that this keyword you're using is actually the wrong keyword, meaning you're not really getting any sales for that with the search campaign. And the specific other search results that are showing up for that specific keyword are not really matching what you're trying to sell. So that's going to lead to a lot of issues with ad relevancy, and that's going to affect your quality score, which is going to make your cost per conversion just skyrocket. But the most important and biggest fallback that I personally believe there is with the SCAG campaign is that there could be some kind of inconsistency simply because, as I mentioned already, there's lower room to scale. And if people start kind of not searching for your given product, especially if it's like a seasonal product like air conditioner, then you're going to be noticing a lot of inconsistencies, meaning one day you could get a lot of sales Sales, the next day you'll get barely any sales. So that's why I recommend that you don't just have a Skag running on your ad account. You have other campaigns running as well. But now that we've kind of got all of those things aside, let's find out exactly how to launch a Skag campaign. And in order to do this, I'm going to be taking you guys over to a Google ad account that I have here. And we're going to be directly looking at how to create the specific Skag campaign. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and click on the plus button right here, because that's exactly how you create a normal search campaign. Go ahead and click on new campaign. And from there, we're going to go ahead and click on sales because we want to get sales. Once you get to this specific section, you want to go ahead and click on search. And from search, you want to come down to website visits. Now, once you choose website visits, you can either go ahead and enter your website's URL over here, or you can wait and not enter anything here because you're going to be inserting the website URL to the specific product page or a collection page later on when you're creating the app itself. So you don't really have to kind of do that over here, but go ahead and click continue. Once you click continue, we're going to be taken to this specific page right here. Normally, I like to go ahead and just give the campaign the specific name of the product along with the terms search and skag. So for instance, in this example, we're going to pretend that we're trying to sell a printer. So what we would do is we would type in printer and then we would type in search skag just like that. Once you're done with that, go ahead and scroll down for networks. You can go ahead and uncheck the display networks. Usually I don't see much results coming from the display networks because it's kind of like a lower converting section of Google ads. So I would just rather 
recommend that you leave search network running. But once you have chosen that, let's kind of scroll down to location. Now for location, of course, you want to go ahead and choose United States because that's where you will be advertising. So let's go ahead and do that. This is actually a test ad account, which is why it says another country right there. But go ahead and add United States as the country. And once you do that, go ahead and specifically choose target and scroll down under the target section where you'll be changing the first circle to the second one, which says people in are regularly in your targeted locations. We want only those people living in the United States. Once you have done that, let's go ahead and scroll down to the specific budget. You want to leave everything else as it is. Now for budget, of course, you want to choose a specific budget which you're comfortable with. I don't recommend anything below $25 a day. The more you have for a search campaign, the better it is. And usually it will take quite some time for the search campaign to really stabilize, maybe a week or two weeks or even three weeks. So in this case, we would, let's say, for example, just do $25. Once you have done that, scroll down to bidding. Now for bidding, you can do whatever option you like. I already have a lot of videos on setting up a search campaign. You can watch my other videos. I'll leave the link in the description below. But in this case, we're just going to pretend that we want to do manual CPC for the printer product. So go ahead and choose manual CPC, uncheck enhanced CPC, and let's scroll down. Now, site link extensions, call out extensions. You want to have both of these set up. And again, I highly recommend you watch some of my other videos on how to set these specific ones up because these are very, very important to set up, especially with search campaigns, because the bigger your ad looks when somebody searches for a product, the higher that your chances of actually selling some. So it's really important that you make your ad look big and one of the easiest ways to have that done is by just adding site link extensions as well as call out extensions but once you have done that on this specific page is where we go ahead and start putting the specific keywords which we will be using within our skag campaign now i'm not going to be going over the keyword research in this specific video because i've already made that video before so you want to again go ahead and check out my other video but let's say for example for the printer we want to go ahead and use just the keyword printer now here's what you would do for the ad group name go ahead and just give it the name whatever keyword you want to use so in this case we would do printer the default bid again you want to do research into the bids as to what bid is ideal for your given product in this case we're going to say 0.50 cents is ideal for the printer product now once that's done we're going to go ahead and enter the specific keywords that we will be using for our skag campaign and there are different ways to go about doing this the first way is simply just using exact match now exact match is just done with brackets just like this one so for example we would just do printer in brackets and what this means is that we're going to only be ranking when somebody types in the keyword print the second way to run a Skags campaign is to have other specific match types going on in there as well. So another match type would be the broad match modifier. Now for the broad match modifier, you would just do the plus sign and then you would type in the specific keyword. And another one would be phrase match. So for this one, you would do it in quotes and that's simply it. So I personally do all three of these in a Skags campaign just because I want to kind of give my campaign a little bit more room instead of just doing exact match and limiting itself to just that given keyword. Because again, as I already mentioned earlier, your keyword can die out any time and when it dies out you will simply have a bad skags campaign which is not getting you in any sales and that's not something we want so in this case i highly recommend that you set it up this way to really get the best bang for your buck when it comes to a skags campaign now once you have done that and once you have set up multiple different ad groups targeting different keywords for example another ad group that i could create and target within this campaign would be for the keyword wireless printer so we would do wireless printer again set a specific bit and i would do the same thing i did before so wireless printer and I would do it in quotes as well so wireless printer and so forth so you guys get the idea but you want to do this and have maybe three to five different ad groups targeting a single keyword each related to the specific product now the beauty about Google search ads is that you're gonna have a different ad for each given ad group that means you'll be incorporating the keyword printer and ads for this specific ad group and for ads for this specific ad group you'll be incorporating the keyword wireless printer and so forth and that's really important again as I mentioned to have a relevant ad but once you have done that let's go and continue on to the next page on this page is where you'll actually be creating the specific ad now here is where you'll enter the specific URL for your website for the product itself Itself or the collection page and this is where you'll start incorporating those specific keywords which you already chose for each ad group so in this case for wireless printer I would make sure that I would have the keyword wireless printer somewhere within this ad group or mentions preferably in the headlines as well as the descriptions now for this one the first ad group it's not ideal to have the keyword wireless printer because we're targeting the keyword printer here so you want to at least have the keyword 
printer everywhere in the headlines as well as the description. Now, I don't mean overdo it and have it literally as every single word out there, but I do mean at least incorporate it once within the headlines. Instead of having it within all three, maybe just have it in one headline. And for description, maybe incorporate it once as well in description one or either is description two. But that's really going to again help get your ad really relevant to what people are searching. And that is what will get you to have a successful Skag campaign. But this is kind of how to specifically launch a Skag's campaign and run those Google search ads profitably. If you found any type of value in this video, smash that like button and smash that subscribe button and I'll see you guys next time.